again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick, although I think I am. <laughs> I have a blinding headache. Oh, I just I realized. I woke up in the these... middle of the night with a like raging headache. I, it didn't actually even wake me up. That's when. I didn't realize it was so bad till that yeah. light just caught me I, right uh, in the But eye, I was sleeping so... and I was doing one of these. Like, oh, that's a big one. <laughs> oh. And I was like, well, uh, might have had something to do with the half a bottle of wine I drank last night. See, mine has nothing to do Although with that. Although I, I don't. It could be anything. I, I'm just, um, not that anybody needs to know, but between the election and me selling my old house, my stress level's been up here yep. for months. Yeah. Um, and now and of course you the get to relax. <laughs> we head say, into the holiday It is season. actually amazing how quickly it shuts off. Bizarrely, like the, my stress. Like, stress. Boom, gone. Boom, oh, that's gone. Great. Like everybody, boom. I yeah. mean, there's, it's still, there's still residuals, but it's amazing how quickly. I really worried that my house stress would not dissipate. dissipate. Yep. No, really, really quick. That's, Maybe it was because the people who bought my house seemed so lovely. And, aw. you know, like, Okay. Right. And it is just sometimes things hang over your head and then you can make a checkbox yeah. and you can say that is done yep. and we are putting yep. that aside. Yep. Like the elections, yep. things didn't exactly go no. the way we wanted, but you know, them is the breaks. Yeah. And I think onward and upward. That's what yeah. I would say. You know, like, I, honestly, I'm like, you know, that little West Manchester project that I've been thinking yeah. about for years, maybe it's time to Wait. look at that. Um, I'm curious to see actually because they're doing some. Homeless actions in other parts mm. of the state. I think there was a big push. Summerworth. In, was it Summerworth, Summerworth or some, Rochester? Yeah. Is that the same Which, area? Yeah. And, um, and so, so I'm just curious. just going to push into our neighborhoods. Yeah, I'm big, curious to see if that actually happened. I forget exactly what it was, but Victoria was talking something about Massachusetts. So Massachusetts is doing some sort of crackdown, which we're like, oh, okay, so that just means they're just going to move up here. Right, and, I mean, and you know, swell. so all of us who have been talking for such a long time about how do you actually crack this egg, how do you fix this problem, I'm like, well, certain jurisdictions that have sort of, you know, reached their, their tipping point, mm -hmm are just, you know, they're they're coming up with solutions and we seem to be coming in Manchester, this basket for the problems. Yes. Um, I was, my husband was down at the river last mm. week and he came home and he was- he The was river, the Piscataqua. Piscataqua yeah. down on the west side at the ice rink, that area. And he was like, I don't want you walking nope. there anymore unless you're armed right. because it's And you're sketchy. not the only person who said that. Somebody else said the same thing. They were like, I went to walk on the path and it was absolutely crazy. Yeah, I, I went yesterday and I usually I go off the path and I like mm. to do the little nope. back trails nope. and nope. stuff nope. and I wasn't I, I wasn't caring so I I just stayed on the main path. But you know that that makes me sad and I'm not saying these people are necessarily dangerous but we are creating a dangerous environment and you know well, we, I don't, yeah I mean but you know a lot uh, of, you know we say they're not necessarily dangerous that's true there is you know it's not. All fish are not sharks. Shark just because sharks swim doesn't make them a fish. That type of thing. Um, but just yesterday, which was interesting that it didn't see it posted anywhere until today. Yesterday, there was some guy stabbed somebody outside of the um, the homeless shelter, and it was interesting to me. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it's just totally coincident. But Victoria had, Sullivan had posted. You know, I saw this, but I can't find it anywhere online or anything. And then literally within like 15 minutes, Manchester Information posted it all. And I thought, well, that's an odd little coincidence. But how is it that somebody got stabbed outside? The, I mean, like, but those are the, that I is mean, the homeless I mean, wouldn't it be people. nice to actually be able to track these things yeah. and to know what's happening in our neighborhoods yeah. instead of being beholden but to see, if you do that, a department that will or will not release certain information depending on the vagaries of what, I don't know, their mood is. Apparently yeah. now in New Hampshire, it is legal for the police who are wearing body cams that we as taxpayers are paying for. Yep. Uh, there were several grants that came in. It seems like a win. Oh, yay, finally, we have a way. We have police. They have body cams. This There's accountability. Keep us all honest. It's going to be great. It's going to help with police reform, except they made it exempt from the yep. right to know laws. And now the police are using their body cams for things that they should not be using them for and then using those copies for themselves, for evidentiary reasons, while keeping it away from the other side. So some judge, in all their wisdom, decided that they uh, 
The alderman, this is Joe Kelly Lavasser, who did win his race, is not entitled to the police body cam recordings of the parking attendant who wrote him a ticket, the judge rules, saying that, yeah, I guess now you can just, uh, you know, we've created roving Roving surveillance units. Well, and I thought it was interesting. A couple things I t- read. It's funny that you brought the same thing as me. Um, one thing that was good to read in this article somewhere is that Representative Will Infantine put in an LSR to clean up the body cam language because there's obviously a problem with the existing language. This is much, much like the, um, the bail reform. Bail reform was a good thing. Somebody shouldn't have to stay in jail just because they're poor while they try to defend themselves in a, in a criminal case, right? But then it turned into a catch and release program because the, the language is poorly written. In this ruling, the, the, ju- the reason they're saying he can't have this footage, even though if it was camera in the room, he could have had it. It says, um, it doesn't fall under any of these exemptions. It does not depict any restraint or use of force by law enforcement. The discharge of a firearm or a prohibit or prohibited from you or I don't even know what that is or and prohibited from using their body cams to record interaction or interviews with victims or reporters of crimes who have consented to the recording regardless of the interview's location. So um, I do think that the police are using a loophole to the <laughs> to their advantage. Um, this is a. You know, this is very frustrating for me because I watched, we inevitably talk about the election indirectly. So I watched because uh, the week, be- just a few days before the election, the Manchester police unions, not the police department, they are not the same thing. The police, policemen's association and the supervisor association, those are unions. The police department is part of the government that you and I as a taxpayers fund. We do not fund directly the police unions. That's a different entity. Um, Do they tend to overlap? Of course. But the police unions came out with a a letter saying Victoria Sullivan refused to dis- to reach out to them, which was blatantly not true. Didn't she go on like ride-alongs? Uh, she went on ride-alongs. <laughs> she has no problem talking with the police. She did not go and talk to the police unions. Guess what the police unions care about? their contracts. Guess what the police department should care about? Policing the city. They are not one and the same. So they put out a letter that was not truthful um, because Victoria was in favor of unencrypting the scanners and because she did not think it was appropriate for um, people to be surveilled in the public for no apparent reason. Um, She looked for more transparency, um, more accountability, and better ways for the police to police and because there's no harm in trying to make things better no and the thing is we know in in states like california there's a town rialto mm-hmm. california where they introduced body cam uh body cams years and years mm. ago i want to say almost 10 years ago now and it's very clear that it actually Benefit. makes the policing yes. safer and yes. better for the police and for us. But here's the thing, folks. You can't create a system where the people who work for us or ostensibly are supposed to be working for us now have certain rights that we no longer have. The state is an agent of us. That is what people the New Hampshire that. Constitution says. The state is not allowed to do anything that you and I are not allowed to do. And somewhere along the line, we have entirely forgotten that, and it's a problem. So I'm all for let's wear body cams. I highly encourage folks, based on my own case and cases throughout history, if you see a police interaction, don't get involved, but record it. Get an independent recording. It's going to help everyone. Assuming because, everyone is doing the right, right thing. Because Be- if you're a police officer, I can't even imagine. I really can't even imagine being a cop and oh, having no, to I deal with the people that I have to do. So you're face to face with somebody, a bad actor, who's just being belligerent and threatening and whatever, and you arrest them for whatever, you know, and then they come back and say, well, that didn't happen. And what, so what's that cop's, then it's a he said, she said, okay. But the body cam shows, no, actually Joe police officer did all the things he was supposed to do, acted appropriately, and this person did not. Win for the police officer. It should make policing better 
for the police officer in the the community. And so, uh, so I think there's no quibbling that uh, you know it seems like everyone kind of agrees that the body cams are a good idea. But in order for them to be a good idea, there has to be an equality of outcome, meaning that <laughs> both sides need to be able to get the footage. And if there is a privacy concern um, of the person who possibly is getting arrested, maybe it was mm. a wrongful arrest, like it was in mm -hmm. my case, uh, folks should definitely go read yeah. the uh, very yeah. long, crazy tirade by some Nuts. dude. <laughs> uh, who wrote this entire? I mean, it was random, you know, isn't it? Funny how it so, just randomly so, so bubbles. So strange, Whatever. right? So, so my court case was decided in 2014. I was arrested in 2010. I prevailed, uh, meaning I won. They lied. I was right, you know. And there's this entire long essay in which he takes the falsified police report, and you know what? These make officers aren't even on the Lori's list. These, these yeah. aren't even the people who make it to the Lori's list, but they lied in their police report. He writes an entire thing using fabricated facts mm -hmm. from the police report, makes it up wholesale. Uh, the last paragraph says, oh, by the way, she won a First <laughs> Circuit decision and uh, was awarded a large settlement, meaning the entire start and middle and very close to the end of that entire thing was nonsense made up by officers who I wish were wearing body cams because, because I was recording, but they corrupted the file at the police department mm. and we couldn't open it. Hmm. So could that be because the uh, file that was there verified Carla's version well, of this is This is where body cams would come in. If, if those police officers in where had been wearing body cams and you were allowed to have access to the footage on them, then it we would wouldn't have, have to wonder, is no Carla case. lying or is the Department right. of Weir lying? Right. And you, you wouldn't know? have had to have gone through a, a major lawsuit, you know, and it just... It, and also the taxpayers. So right. here's the, the other people thing. people in Weir are the ones who suffered. So here's... And that's the insidious part, right? So when, when, when we have bad lawyers or we have bad doctors or... Any other real profession, Con contractors, people have to carry insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, your insurance company will, at some stage, let you know. You know what? Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be a doctor because you seem to kill an awful amount <laughs> of people. We're not going to insure you anymore, right? But because there is no direct relationship, whenever there's a bad actor in the state. That cost just gets passed on to the taxpayers, yes. and no one is really held accountable. So that is where that whole issue about qualified immunity mm -hmm. comes in, right? So qualified immunity is where where the police department literally says we're above the law. Oops, Even we couldn't possibly have known that's against the law. How could we have known? How? And you're like, well... When I don't know something's against the law, and I'm like, whoops, sorry, my bad, I didn't know it was against the law, that's not an excuse right. for you and me, but it is for state employees, and that is why we have a problem. We have corruption, it is immoral, it is a... It's, well, and it's, it's a just, mess, it's because not, we're protecting and, the bad apples. And there's no re there's... Like, it's not like we don't know ways to fix it. I think that's the frustrating part, is that, like, there's ways to address the problems in with bad actors but for whatever reason too many people just don't want to admit that there is a problem or that we should because so, if we if we address the problem it's actually would re be holding people accountable i want to ask you something and this is going to be hugely unpopular so i guess i'm going to qualify it with that um I thought it was really sad. You know, there was a fire in Manchester yes. this week, and uh, a fireman got severely yes. hurt in a heroic situation. Yes. They did their job, yes. and they went beyond, they, above and yes, beyond, they right? Like, they went lives. back into right. a burning building right. and saved someone's life. I get it. That's tragic, and thank you to mm -hmm. that person. On the flip side, we did have a trooper, a trooper's trooper, who passed away last week yep. in a accident, right? So it was a detail, which means yep. it was a voluntary choice to yep. be there to get overtime and to get paid, yep. right? 
Um, and there was a truck or a semi that barreled down, yep. and somehow I, well, I, I, I still haven't gotten the details because nope. it sounds to me no no one said that the semi was off the road or, and hit the car. Or, or, right, and nobody was arrested to the best so, of my knowledge, which so, makes it sound like it may have just been an accident. So, so we don't know what the facts are there. But here's what I do know: when I was driving somewhere last week, there were two times where the highway was literally shut down because there were like scores. I think I counted 32 on, on the other side of the freeway. Mm -hmm. I was going down to Nashua and they were coming up north. There were helicopters. Downtown was shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and I get it. You know, your friend died. That is tragic. But it seems to me that it is unseemly it's to little... use so many state resources to have troopers coming from the entire region. Yep. There were thousands of yep. troopers who came because this one gentleman was was in an accident and passed away. And to me, it just seems that like those two things, it almost takes away from when there's true heroism right. and when there's just an accident. Now, we've all probably had friends who have passed away in car accidents. It's a private thing. When your friend dies, I feel like the way you pray, pray, uh, pay tribute to them is that's like a private Mm. experience but to make it this like i mean it looked like something out of i do like know, a military i do know what you're saying because like, I do, like the uniforms I and the marching it, and the roads are closed and I, all of that i think i mentioned it to someone because i was like geez that just seems weird like do we not have any crime happening when, when when and it's this is not meant to be disrespectful to the police officer who died that's terrible i feel bad for his family i feel terrible for the people who had to work from it was a tragic accident I don't know what the circumstances were either because this is what happens with the news these days is they put a piece out there and then there's no longer any follow-up. So we never actually hear. Unless it's... Unless you pay attention and then it's like, oh, wait, I have to keep all this malfeasance yeah. in my head, so, which is a lot. <laughs> it does seem odd that so many... Um, so many... I mean, I'd be curious. Well, you know what's Could interesting? Could we 91A that? I don't because know. I'm pretty sure that costs more than a million dollars. Well, and dollars. I, want, I, I also think this. So we're talking about, I, I, we talk about police details all the time. Now, keep in mind, for those at home who don't know, so you have a police officer, right, who works X amount of hours per week, and that is his job. That is his day job to work X amount of hours a week. I think it's like 32 hours for a police officer. Don't quote me on that. But it, it's a set amount of time. During that time, they are Joe police officer. Detail work on the other side is when um, there is road construction or something that's going to disrupt the traffic and um, the state requires that a police detail, and by the state I mean the state or the city or the county or whomever, a police detail to be there. Now that might be Verizon working in, a po in the city street. That might be road work. That might be somebody having a large event that's gonna disrupt the flow of traffic. The police officers, um, I, I distinctly asked Chief Mara at the time to explain this to me because I, I had a bill in about it. This was, you know, a decade ago now. Um, when there's a police detail required, they go first in Manchester, they go first to the Manchester Police Department and see if, any, if nobody there wants to do that police detail, which they make about $50 an hour. The city makes like, you know, a penny. I thought it's almost a hundred. No, now. it's about fifty some dollars I an hour. It's I is the last mm, time I looked. I don't think so. <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't matter. It's it's not ten dollars an hour. It's a fifty even if at fifty dollars an hour, it's fifty dollars an hour and there's like a four hour minimum. So it's all voluntary on the part of the police officers. And Chief Mara explained to me that if nobody from the Manchester Police Department wanted to do the Manchester details, then they reach out to neighboring communities in the the county sheriff's department and i asked well what happens if nobody wants to do it he goes then they just waive the requirement for the detail so it's really dangerous and we have to have people doing it unless we don't have anybody who wants to do it in which case then it's fine which sounds to me like that might be something that's in a contract somewhere where people are like you know but you can't make a nice benefit right and there's no option choose for. there's no option to hire just Joe over there to do this detail. It has to be a, a law enforcement person, which is kind of strange. So, okay, what I always found peculiar is 
when there's a police car with the officer because that op that car doesn't belong to that officer that car belongs to the police department and if police detail work is is separate then why are there vehicles there because isn't that then the police department so i have a question and it goes ties into that whole entourage when a police officer dies there's all these state trooper cars and police cars and all these things and you think so who's do we have that many excess cars that are available at any given point or do we just not have any crime during those times it is it is an oddity it, it, it there is something that just doesn't sit 100 percent comfortable you know what i mean I, it's I not about what you mean it's not about it happened that twice there were helicopters it seemed like a lot i think i might actually 91a i won't get any answers of course but uh it might be worth a right to know so, request to at least understand uh, what it costs, and maybe as a maybe as a society, and maybe as you know, Manchkins, we decide, yeah, we're willing to pay a million dollars in in taxpayer funds uh, for for the the uh, presentation of of this level of uh, honoring. Uh, maybe, but maybe we should know what the facts are and what it costs, and sort of understand. Well, mm -hmm. is there more crime that happens at that time? Mm -hmm. Like, really, how 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 is it possible that we can bring in? I think it was over two thousand five hundred. Well, and people will say, "Well, they're um, off duty," and I'm like, "Okay, they might be <laughs> off duty, but their vehicles are off duty." Well, so anyway, so 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 it just occurred to me because I was trying to I was trying to figure out for myself why I had this this reaction, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, wow, I mean, the traffic was backed up for miles because they were doing a convoy on the highway. So I was like, but what if you're like four cars behind that and you're a brain surgeon and you need to get somewhere? Yep. It's sort of like, it just feels like it's not really respectful to the people who are paying the bill hmm. either. So, so that's my sense. Um, all right, what else can we talk okay, about? Okay, so. We're the federal uh, court case against the the uh, fourth yeah, mandate. Um, I think that's an interesting. Uh, it, that's going back and forth. Uh, New Hampshire joined. I forget how many other states to sue the Biden administration to say no. OSHA can't dictate that all employers. Um, and the Fifth Circuit actually stayed. The, yeah. The OSHA. So so basically, what's happening, right? So we have this hot potato. So there is no executive order. Joe Biden did not issue an executive order to mandate the vaccine. He's just using They OSHA. did a press thing for a month, pretending like that's what happened. But if you actually go try and find the documentation, it's all just show. They were doing that while they tried to figure out, they being the federal government in this scenario, how can we implement this? Mm -hmm. So then they did a workaround and they went to OSHA, right? Which is supposed to look at workman's comp and sort of like yep. uh, the workplace. hazardous right. workplace stuff, right? Um, and OSHA was like, yeah, sure. We're just going to introduce this stuff that's never been done. This is never how it's worked. We're just going to say, whoops, yeah, we, we, we have this new right which is clearly unconstitutional, right? So the Fifth Circuit, to their credit, on Friday yep. said, whoa, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second, where are we getting these rights? Uh, clearly, if OSHA was somehow tasked with doing these new amazing rules and powers, they must come from somewhere. And if they've never had these powers, where did they suddenly come from? So I'm moderately optimistic I am too. that maybe we're going to stop this idiotocracy again for people who seem confused if you want to get vaccinated knock yourself out for people who do not want to get vaccinated equally have the right to not knock themselves out it's not complicated the state does not own you the state cannot tell you what to do to your body. Your employer, in my opinion, because it's coming from the federal government, really shouldn't be able to do it either. But I do believe in private contract. So maybe if you work for a company that is mandating this, you need to make a decision if you're not into it, whether that is the place you want to work. And I think what we're excitingly gonna see over time is that there are going to be a lot of small businesses that are starting. There's gonna be a lot of people just really trying to mm. um, help and accommodate a new way of doing things or an alternate but way it's, of But it's doing unfortunate. Things. I was reading in the paper today and things are, you know, you don't always think about the repercussions. I mean, I do, but 
So there were two people that were quoted in the paper. One was Grapponi Otto, and the other one was uh, Tom Boucher from the T-Bones, Cactus Jacks chain, you know. And, like, so none of the individual T-Bones have 100 or more employees. But because they're one big company of 850, because there's so many locations, they now would fall under this mandate, which is kind of insane because it has nothing to do with the number. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. So they're saying, well, that's great because now they about half of their employees are not vaccinated. And they're like, great. So they're just going to leave and go to smaller companies, which is great for the smaller companies that, quite honestly, can't handle a sudden growth in their businesses, we know. But, it, the, you know, Tom Boucher and their group, whether I agree with them on everything or not, they've invested all their lives into this business that now the government's going to screw with. Same with Grapponi. Grapponi's like, we're going to lose good mechanics and good workers to smaller auto places because of a mandate that has nothing to do. The, the, the employee workplace prior to the mandate prior to January 4th is no different than the workplace after January 4th. If, if there was such a need for this crazy mandate, it would have had to been last January But also, 4th. if everything is so dangerous and so deadly and so, so, so that they're claiming we have to do all these things, why are we able to do this this month, then next, next month, month, and then, then do it different? And why can we say, oh, you need a pa vaccine passport to go to a restaurant? But you know what? It might take three or four or eight days to get your test results. But, but okay. somehow that's magically not dangerous. All of it is idiotic. It's it is, just so it is, nonsensical. It, it just does not make common sense. I feel at this stage, if you are writing a narrative you couldn't write to this. drive as many people as possible nuts, you'd have one bucket of people who are just really scared of everything, and we've scared them out of their minds, literally out of their amygdalas. They are just kookaloony, scared, and will do anything the government says. Let's say over here are people like me, right, who are highly skeptical of everything. But Everything is so illogical now that I'm like, man, are you trying to drive me crazy too? <laughs> because how can we even be in this? You know, I was in an argument this morning, WMUR, I'm still sticking with the please don't jab your children mm. uh, narrative. And, uh, and this one guy was coming at me and I said, look, let's just talk about informed consent. For people to give informed consent, I think you should know what, what are you're in these uh, products. consenting to. Yes. There should be a disclaimer. So, so Pfizer, which uh, was fined the largest fine in human history for medical fraud, <laughs> i.e. they lied about what their products do, and they had to pay over $2 trillion in fines. These are the people who are now saying, well, one, we're not actually going to tell you what are in these. Two, you had to we sign need a waiver. to jab your children in order to collect data, in order to know what the side effects are. And oh, by the way, we have now put this other thing into the youth injections. It is a uh, product that you give people if they're going to have a heart attack as a preemption. I can't remember. It starts mm. with T-H-O-M, so throm something. I forget the exact name. And I'm like, why... Would you add that to a experimental gene therapy, which the, uh, the, the CEO of one of these companies is on a video saying, you know, we would never have been able to get the people to use this stuff if we hadn't, uh, if we these don't. gene therapies, if we hadn't suddenly had this pandemic. So, you know, again, I'm just saying connect the dots. Uh, listen to who you want, but I hope you'll listen to people who say there is no actual compelling reason at this stage for your children to get this. Check out Carla's book at The Ecstatic Pessimist. You can see, find it at carlagarrick.com, and I'm sure you can get it out on Amazon and Kindle and all those wonderful places. Um, do me a favor. Send me via email, manstalk at gmail.com. Send us Great restaurants that have Thanksgiving dinner for Ooh. those of us who don't want to have to cook. And two, start thinking about your holiday shopping in places that you can shop local right here in Manchester and surrounding communities. Um, I'd really like to spend part of the show every week okay. promoting local businesses that you can go and m maybe people aren't Oh, yeah, and, and, and lots of people have started like arts and crafts yeah. and little projects at home. And little people websites, are, things like that. If you, you live know. in Manchester or surrounding communities and you have any ideas, manchtalk at gmail.com and we'd love to feature them on the TV show. That's all we got. 
Enjoy the weather. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to rain on Friday, but it's been in, going to be in the 50s and 60s for the next so 10 days. So many leaves I have to go rake now. <laughs> right. That's all I got. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>